Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to episode number two. And today we're going to be discussing interactions with certain medications if you've got depression or anxiety, because a lot of medications interact with other medications and food that you don't even realize that it interacts with. So we've got an app that uh, we use. Yeah, so we use, well, I use an app called drugs.com. And basically, you create an account and you can add all your medications that you're on uh, currently. And what it will do is it will show you any known interactions that your medication has with each other. So what you're currently taking, if any of them interact with each other, as well as whether they interact with other things like food and alcohol, etc. Yeah, so, yeah, that's pretty good to have. Because I've, I've, even people that I've spoken to, a lot of people take whatever medications they're given. They'll go out on the weekend and they'll drink. They'll do like whatever they want and they don't realize that certain things, especially anxiety and depression medications that works in your brain yeah. and your chemicals in your brain, um, especially alcohol. You can't drink alcohol yeah. on most no. of them. Yeah. Because exactly. some of them are sedatives. And then yeah, you, most of them work with your central nervous system. Yeah, and, and then you're drinking alcohol, which is a depressant for your central nervous so, system. So yeah, it's very dangerous, very bad combination. So we'll just go through some of the medications that we've got, uh, the ones that we spoke about the other day, the antidepressants and anxiety tabs that we both, well, I haven't really been <laughs> taking, but he, <laughs> that I'm on, that I'm currently on. Yeah. Just so you get an idea, because most of these medications. Um, if you're struggling with either condition, most people be on one or the one or the other. Yeah. The benzodiazepine, yeah. anti-anxiety. Yeah. So I'm currently on Wellbutrin for my depression. So that's the anti uh, antidepressant I'm on. And then for my anxiety, I'm on Urbanol. So if I check my oh, and then I'm also on Dopacol for insomnia. Yeah. So if I check my interactions um, with my current medication, I see that uh, well, butrin interacts with my sleeping tablets because both of them have a risk of causing seizures. So oh, wow. it says that it can be very dangerous taking them at the same time. So then you take one in the morning, one at night. Yes, for instance. yes, yeah. So I'm not allowed to take my Wellbutrin later in the day. I have to take it in the morning. Oh, and that's then, pretty good. Yeah. So at least like you've been prescribed this and so you you missed your one tablet in the morning. Yeah. At least the app tells you that you can't take it at night together. Yes. So things like that that you might not be aware of. Uh, yeah. Another thing, this video is not sponsored by drugs.com, no. but it's a, <laughs> a, a, we wish it was. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a very useful app if you have all these different medications, if you struggle to keep a schedule of knowing when to take the medications and especially more importantly, knowing what you can and can't take together because that can affect your well-being yeah and also another interesting thing when it comes to antidepressants uh, one of the hazards that drugs.com mentions is that it interacts with your depression so sometimes antidepressants although they're there to boost your mood and stuff they can make your depression worse to the point where you have suicidal thoughts or behavior and with uh well butrin specifically um it can cause the activation of mania and hypomania in patients that have a family history of it oh wow so yeah it's very good to yeah, at least know what's you about it all of those yes, different things because yeah, like normally you'd just know like okay with this medication maybe don't drink alcohol because like you shouldn't be having alcohol with any medications yeah. you on but all these extra little things you wouldn't think of yeah exactly yeah. Especially it's tablets that you've never heard of. The doctor's prescribing it to you. Yes. And now yes. you're just adding it to whatever else you're taking. You yes. could be taking multivitamins and certain things that might also interact with yes. it that you're not even aware of. So the nice thing is you can put all the list of vitamins. You can put vitamins and, yes, you and different put supplements, supplements and that you're on. Yeah. And then it will just bring that up. So you create the profile and then all your vitamins and minerals that you're taking, along with all the new medications that you're doing, it will show you that this can't be taken with that. And yeah, that's that's very important because even certain foods, um, I think my anti-anxiety, the yeah. Alprazolam. Alprazolam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I keep forgetting the name of it. Um, I think that interacts with grapefruit. 
Yes, yes. Uh, grapefruit and grapefruit juice can interact with alprazolam and lead to pos- potentially dangerous side effects. Yeah, so what grapefruit does, a lot of people don't realize this, you cannot have grapefruit juice if you're on heart medications or blood pressure medications because what grapefruit does, it binds to the medication and you'll get a whole lot more going into your bloodstream so you can actually double or triple your dose with one tablet. So yeah. it's very important to know. And things like that you would never think of. Yeah, Just having maybe. a grapefruit or grapefruit juice, yeah. you'll probably pick it up off the shelf, not realize it, drink it, and suddenly you're feeling strange. Yeah. Because <laughs> you've taken like three times the dose when you've only taken your normal medications because you've had grapefruit. Yeah. Um, another thing is turmeric, turmeric powder, and turmeric root. Oh, really? That also inter- yeah, it lowers your blood pressure. So if you're on blood pressure medication, Oh, it can make it like dangerously low. Yeah, make it yeah. dangerously low. Okay. And uh, there's a few other things that turmeric interacts with as well. So it's good for you if you're not on anything, can actually help you like a medication because it can lower blood pressure and yeah. fight free radicals. And there's studies on actual cancer that has killed cancer. Oh, wow. There's proper medical trials on it. Oh, that's so cool. it's very good. But I mean, just like grapefruit, you take it and then can become dangerous. Yes, because you don't know the interaction it has with your current list of medication yeah. exactly so this is a really good app to have because you can schedule what time of day you need to take your tabs it reminds you what time to take the tabs and that's really good like if you're busy in the day you're not you thinking can, to take your medications yes, yeah you've got deadlines you're busy working and then at There's least been a couple of days where i have forgotten to take my meds yeah, so. and then you can't double dose you no, have to skip that yes, day yeah and then maybe you feel worse the next day because now your brain's out of sync yes so it's yeah. good to have something just to remind you and also to warn you of the dangers because I promise you 90 percent of the people don't know the dangers of medication they think okay it's been prescribed by the doctor i can take them i'm fine but depends on what you're eating through the day what other meds you're taking through the day you could affect yourself worse and then think the meds are not working or yeah. it's making you feel woozy and weird yeah. when meanwhile you're just doing something wrong. So take us through a day of your meds, like what it makes you feel. Let's start with the first one you take in the morning. Okay, so the first thing I take in the morning is Wellbutrin. And I've only been on it for like three days. So the first day was actually really good, like, I had, I'm pretty sure it was mania. <laughs> like bouncing said, off the ceiling. Yo, I was ecstatic. Like I, I was happy. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I did feel like kind of woozy and stuff in the morning. Um, but then later on, I read up that it's actually because I took it on an empty stomach. Oh, okay. So, the, so for the second day, I took it uh, with food. And I didn't have any of that. that uh, <laughs> more, a little bit more stable. Yeah, it was a, it was a bit more in neutral, <laughs> if I could say it like that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so the Wellbutrin has been going pretty well so far. Okay, that's the antidepressant. That's my antidepressant, okay. yeah. Then the next thing I take in the day is my Urbanol, um, my anti-anxiety meds. Okay. It's a benzodiazepine. The only like side effect that I feel of it is a little bit of sedation just okay. makes you feel a little sleepy yeah. but other than that it's pretty okay and then that carries me through till around 10 o'clock when i take my sleeping tablet which is the topical okay which is the quetiapine and then that takes about an hour and then out. i'm out <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so at least they're well spaced as well you're taking the one first thing in the morning yeah yeah, yeah because if so the Wellbutrin and the Dopaquil, they interact with each yeah. other because they, well, they don't interact with each other, but they both have seizures as one of the major side effects. Yeah, yeah. So if you have them together, it can increase that chance. So splitting them apart yeah, reduces it. Yeah. And you don't need both together anyway. Yeah. The ones to help you sleep, ones yes. to just manage your depression. So yes, yeah. at least that gap. Uh, when I took my... Alprazolam, I honestly didn't like that feeling. It, it's also a benzodiazepine. Yes, yes, yeah. But uh, it's a bit stronger than the urban older. Uh, yeah. yeah. Even though it's a low dose, I don't enjoy that feeling. It's like you're floating. It's like you're floating <laughs> and you're not really with it. And my brain fights that feeling. Yeah. So I'll be laying there and I'm f- like, got that floaty feeling like. You, you feel like you're moving, like you're on a ship almost. Yeah. And it's like on rough waters and it's and you're you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, so I don't really like that feeling. So when I have taken it, I really can't relax. And it's so stupid because it should make you relax. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, that feeling of just floating and letting go is like my mind just says, nope, don't enjoy this. <laughs> so it's like I'm fighting that whole experience when I've taken yeah. it. Yeah. But that, uh, I only took two tablets. So it was split up into four doses because it was half a tablet a day. Yeah. But I felt like I was having panic attacks and I take it. And I didn't want to get into that cycle of training my brain to be taking the tablet every time I have a panic attack. Yeah, yeah. So when I don't have the tablets anymore, I have a panic attack and then, and then you don't know how to cope. With yeah. It. Or yeah. a panic attack brought on because I haven't been on the tablet for a week. And yeah. it's like my brain thinking, okay, where's the tablets now? Yeah. So I think I was thinking that in the back of my head while I'm on the tabs as well. I've never ever been good with, with, um, depression or anxiety tabs ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I've been prescribed, I've started and stopped, but yeah. Thank goodness, that's not a, you shouldn't do that. That's bad advice. <laughs> but for me, I feel like I like getting uh, my mind strong and like doing things without the medications. So the only thing that I'm still on now is my high blood pressure medications from the heat stroke. Yeah. That I can't just stop because I need to get my blood pressure lower because it's yeah, if it's like too a high, 70 year old like man's <laughs> blood pressure for some reason. So I got another two months of that. So that's the only thing I'm on. My Alprazolam, I'm not taking and I'm yeah. feeling good. I haven't had panic attack in a while now, okay. which is great That's because good. I was having yeah. random ones yeah. like nearly every single day since my heat stroke mm. and I didn't have it for years. And then suddenly it was just like all the time and I was freaking yeah. out. So I think I've done pretty well not taking any tabs, Yeah, learn to cope with it because I know I can, like I know I can manage my anxiety. It just goes through phases every now and then. And I think the heat stroke just sent it into complete haywire. Yeah. So... Yeah, at least I don't don't have to rely on that. But there are people that need chronic medications and do need to take it. Yeah. So don't yeah, ever you, just stop it, especially yeah, anxiety always, tabs. Always speak with your doctor first before stopping medication or changing like the when you take it and how you take it because you don't know what's going to change, like how's it going to affect you. Because sometimes, um, well, a, a lot of the time with antidepressants and stuff, you have to... They start you off on low dosages, work your way up to the standard yeah. dose. And if you just cut it, like just you just go cold turkey, you will definitely have side effects, but more of withdrawal symptoms. Yeah, because so, you build up a tolerance. Yeah, but also y your body, like, so let's say if you have an SSRI, it keeps your serotonin levels higher in your brain. Now you just cut that out. Now your serotonin levels just drop back to like the natural level. But now you, you were up here and now you're down here. Yeah. So everything goes down with you. Yeah. So yeah, you mustn't play around with your meds. Yeah, and I'm sure if you're taking a tablet like that, your brain's natural serotonin is not producing as much because no, now you... It's relying on it's the It's relying on it. So yeah. now when you stop, you'll probably be even more depressed for a while Yeah. because now your brain's not even producing the little bit that you had before yes. taking it. So when you stop, like that you're going to just feel even worse and then you're probably going to think worse like oh now i need the tabs to like i need to rely on the tabs yeah but that's why they wean you off it you take less and less and less and then eventually yes. your brain can produce a bit more and compensate yeah so yeah you, don't your brain adjusts they they usually do it over a week or so so that's not too bad yeah so you'll so what with me with the previous one i was on brintelix um i started on five milligrams worked my way up to ten then I was on 10 for a while. And then because I wanted to switch me to uh, Wellbutrin, I had to come back to five for a week and then stop the Brintelix and then switch over to the Wellbutrin. Okay. Yeah. So it's not too bad. It can yeah. be done. Yeah. Uh, don't do what I do. <laughs> <laughs> that is don't definitely try this at home, kids. bad advice. Because <laughs> even my beta blockers, I stopped my beta blockers when I was on them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> as as, as good as they were to help me i felt like i wasn't myself on them sometimes yeah. but i think that's what most people do they feel like they take the tablets and it changes them so they stop it and then they actually do need it so i'm fortunate that my anxiety isn't at a point where it's critical where it like changes my thinking and stuff while yeah, i'm in their yeah. panic attack yeah it doesn't alter the yeah. way you see reality yeah. and stuff yeah maybe while i'm in the panic attack I feel like I'm dying and then yes. I've, I'm altered right then. Yeah. But then once I calm down, I'm fine again. My heart rate comes back to normal. 
So it's not like I'm, I'm reliant on these medications and the way the doctor said I must take it is if I have a panic attack when needed. Yeah. So now I'm not even having panic attacks, so I'm not taking them yeah. and I'm fine, which is probably the right way to do it. So I'm not reliant on them. Yeah. But uh, benzodiazepines uh, are pretty addictive. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm fortunate I don't enjoy that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, very interesting that we've got an app to tell us how to manage our medications and just help you because the last thing you've got really got all the stresses in the world you're thinking about every day you're busy every day with work yeah and now to rely on your medications and your schedules and know what to take and what not to take it becomes too much so just by installing the app drugs.com you'll set up all your medications that you need you can put the time in and it will just help you through the day so it's worth checking out i hope this helps you guys we'll see you guys soon